Welcome to Model Engineering for Beginners and this is part 11 making a multi-stud steam pipe flange. Recently I sold a 12 inch Southworth steam pump to a customer in the USA and this is a steam inlet tap that fits on the engine. The customer required some parts making and one of the parts that needed making was a mating flange to fit the existing flange on the valve. The first thing I had to do was make another flange and this was a very simple plain turning job. And as you can see on screen at the moment, the finished blank is on the right hand side of the screen. I'd just like to mention that I'm taking great care not to break the tap off in the hole in the valve, because if I do that, then the whole job is scrap. So it's quite nerve wracking. Some model engineering jobs are very nerve wracking when you're working on existing equipment. But it's best not to be timid. You need to take the bull by the horns and do the job. But just take great care. And do it slowly, that's the best way to do it. So the main difficulty with this job, as far as I can see it, is drilling the holes around the flange that I made to perfectly match the holes that I'm currently threading on the pump valve. I suppose I could work out mathematically the positions of the holes on the pump valve, but this is going to take a while. I think I have a simpler idea, and maths was never my strong point. There are many ways of doing this job, I just want to find the quickest and easiest. I could coat the valve in ink and press it onto a piece of paper, and that would transfer the whole positions, but alas I do not have any ink. So while I'm sat here thinking about the best way to transfer the holes to the new flange, I'll just get on with the job for the moment. The next thing to do is to rub the flange on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper to remove any burrs caused by the tapping of the holes. And then it's time to look for some stainless steel countersunk 8BA bolts that are in my collection of 8BA bolts. The fact that the 8BA bolts are countersunk is of no consequence, it's just that I do know that the countersunk ones are made from stainless steel. If these holes in the pump valve were all the way through the flange, it would be easy. I could simply stick the new flange to the old flange with some Loctite, then all I'd have to do is scribe through from behind, but no such luck. These are blind holes, which made them quite difficult to tap with the 8BA plug tap that I used. After a little bit of thought, the quickest method seemed to be this one. I used the original fitting to centralise a piece of paper on the existing flange. And then I just used a pencil point to press the paper through the holes. I could have used a scriber, but I just had this pencil on the bench and it was close at hand. All I then had to do was remove the piece of paper from the centre threaded part that was in the valve, and then I machined the centre threaded part a little bit so that it fitted into my new flange and refitted the paper. And if you think about it, this is very simple, very straightforward, not clever at all. All it does is holds the paper pattern exactly in the middle of the flange, which is where it was in the first place when it was screwed into the valve. All I have to do now is carefully press the piece of paper down onto the new flange. I'm using the hole in the end of my adjustable spanner to do this. Once the piece of paper is firmly pressed onto the new flange, all I have to do is use a small felt tip pen through the holes in the piece of paper to make marks on the flange. Then it's over to the drilling machine, and I initially drill the flange with a small centre drill. I'm drilling these holes as perfectly as possible. I can clearly see the mark on the flange, and with a bit of experience I've had plenty of that, I can generally drill a hole on a mark. I don't need to make a centre pop in it first. So if you're lacking in confidence or experience and you're doing a job like this, use a centre punch and make a little centre pop and this will hopefully keep the centre drill in the correct position. So once I've centre drilled all of the holes, I then drill the holes all the way through the flange, clearing size for an 8BA bolt. Actually, to be perfectly honest, anticipating problems the clearing size was slightly larger than 8BA, because I did notice as the 8BA bolts were going into the flange, some of them were not perfectly straight. So at this point I thought, I know, I will make a gasket. So using the flange as a drill guide, I drilled the holes all the way through the gasket material into a suitable piece of scrap wood placed on the bench. Then I cleared away all the sawdust and cut out the gasket with a pair of scissors and took out the centre of the gasket with a hole punch. I cut off the heads of all the 8BA bolts and carefully ground them flat on my linisher or belt sander. 
The title of this tutorial is Fiddly Jobs, and this really was fiddly. In fact, this nut driver had to be turned down in the lathe so I could get the nuts on. Then I tightened them up with this very small spanner. And it's a good combination brass nuts on stainless steel studs. This will ensure that the parts do not rust and it will be possible to remove them if ever you need to take the flange off again. And the flange, of course, does need to come off to have a quarter inch pipe silver soldered to it so that you can pipe steam to the pump. If you look carefully, you'll see I put a couple of marks around the edge which show me which way around it has to go. It will only fit one way. And this is due to a combination of factors. One being the fact that the original holes in the valve itself are not 100% equidistant from each other. And the other one is errors in the straightness of the studs and also maybe errors in my drilling of the other flange, but as that's a carbon copy of the first flange, there isn't much of an error there. And that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. This has been one of the most fiddly jobs I've done for some time. But thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.